I've also heard, I mean, I had to talk with uh, some of my friends when I came over here, and some of them uh, have, have different ways of thinking as well. And somebody told me, what right does one man have over the other man on telling him how to dress? How would you address that question? What man has a right to tell the other man how, how to, to dress? dress? Or what right does a woman have to tell the other woman yes. how to dress? So what you realize that right is different. Fine? But normally when you ask any man, you ask, he will say that fine, you ask him a simple question. If there are two twin sisters who are equally beautiful, very beautiful, who are walking down the streets of Mali, one is dressed up in their Samak hijab, complete body covered, the only part seen is the face and hand of the breast, and the other twin sisters even in the western clothes of mini, mini skirts, or she's wearing shorts, or low necks. And if both of them are walking down the streets of Mali, and down the corner there is a hooligan who's waiting for a catch, who's waiting to tease a girl, I am asking the question: Which girl will it tease? The girl wearing the mini skirts, the girl wearing the samik hijab. <laughs> Answer is obvious, isn't it? Obvious. The one wearing the mini skirts. Now here, the thing is that then you ask that man, that what if someone teases your sister? If someone teases your mother, oh, I will break his neck. So when someone teases your mother, you want to break his neck. When, when someone teases somebody else's mother, you say it is normal. So there's a saying in Hindi, it happens okay. with two forces. So the two forces, one, how the girl is dressed up, and how the man also. So both are to blame, equally blame. We have, we have the same saying in our language, except it, there's a slight twist to it. It says, one hand cannot clap. Correct, one hand cannot clap. That's right. So the thing is that the both are responsible. Even the girl who's not properly dressed up is responsible, and the man staring is responsible. Both are responsible. So wearing is important for the society. If that is the case, imagine if you know, there are many people who say, what right do you have to say how, how a person dressed up? You cannot let the society go on the wrong track. Imagine if there are people walking uh, without clothes on the street. You might have riots on your hands. There'll be a problem. So you can't say that, you know, where's the limit? See, some people say that you should not interfere. So if you go there, so what? Everyone has a limit. For this, is, this, is, this, is what I, this is where I'm coming from. People say this. What, how can you interfere in somebody else's life? Correct. So the thing, the limit is, for example, in certain countries, in certain countries, uh, even looking at a woman is supposed to be immodest. If you go to Islamic country, where I have Islamic following, in other countries, you come to India, looking at a woman is not immodest. Touching a woman is immodest. Uh -huh. you, you go to other Western countries, looking is not immodest, touching is not immodest, you can shake hands. But you cannot go beyond that. In other Western countries, you can do anything with the man and woman as long as it is with permission. So where do you draw the limit? Where do you draw the limit? So what you realize that same way some people tell me that uh, I tell them that what is the limit it keeps on changing depending upon society I see. but the best description can be given by creator Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that is the reason not only in the Quran even if you read the Bible the Bible specifies the same thing in the book of Deuteronomy chapter number 22 verse number 5 in first Timothy chapter number 2 verse number 9 that the women should not they should be dressed up shamefacedness with sobriety and they should not have braided hair of golds and pearls. It's mentioned in the first Corinthians, chapter number five, verse number seven, that the woman that does not cover her head, her head should be shaved off. So Bible is more strict even than the Quran. Same thing in the Vedas. In the Vedas also it says the woman should cover her head. So what we fail to realize that our creator, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who has created us, knows what is the best. He is the creator, he knows what is the best, which will be best for us, how to lead a life uh, which is of peace. And, and there you have the exact stamp That's right. for, for that particular answer. And plus, logically also you can prove this. Please, elucidate. Logically, logically I have asked you the question, which girl will it is? And you said, but obvious, the girl wearing the western clothes. That means the girl wearing the western clothes is inviting trouble. She's inviting. So what we would say, that she is a cause and the person staring is a cause. Both are equally responsible. But how about if you have somebody who is very, very modestly, modestly dressed, mm. who passes a comment on someone else, mm. hey, that person's dress is not according to what I believe is right. Mm. Is that permissible? It is permissible. What is the intention is important. 
if the intention of that person is to get the other human being on the straight path, it is permissible, but it should be done with hikmah. As you earlier quoted the verse of the Quran of Surah Nahal, chapter 16, verse 125. Invite all to the way of thy Lord with wisdom and beautiful preaching and argue with them in the ways that are best most Gurish. You should not insult. Hey, what are you doing? Why are you doing that? It's not Lord. Do the hikmah with love and affection. As the Quran says, you win over your enemies rather than defeat them. Brother, in the previous episode, you mentioned uh, the, the concept of, of having faith. And here you're coming up with, with another, another very firm statement here. Do it with love. Of course, love. Hikmah. And, and wisdom. With wisdom. That, the, that their main purpose should not be to insult the person. A main purpose is to get him on the straight path. As Allah says in Surah Al Imran, chapter 310, We Muslims are the best of people evolved for mankind because we enjoin what is good and we forbid what is wrong and we believe in Allah. So our therefore, duty is to your message what here is, is therefore, your message here is when it comes to dress codes for Muslims. All the signs are there, all the indications are there, the directions are there, That's right. right in the book. That's right. Go there, take a look at it. That's but if you want to correct your brother or sister, don't insult. Correct. Do it with wisdom, That's right. do it with kindness, That's right. do it with love. What a beautiful message, my brother. Thank you so much. I enjoyed that, and I'm sure our audience did as well. Just to add one point. Yes. Normally people, when they try and put, beard is important or salah is important. Of course the action is important. But they cannot belittle the, the dress code. The dress code is important. As I said, it may not come in the major sense. But if a person wants to go to Jannah and wants to collect even those half marks out of 100, one mark out of 100, this altogether such things will add up. So even the hijab is important, even the beard is important. It may not be as important as Salah. Fine? But a person doing both together of a Salah gives zakat is charitable, is honest, and keep the dress code, then he'll go on a high level, inshallah. Thank you so much for that beautiful message of love, my brother. Ladies and gentlemen, that's all we have time for this evening, and thank you so much for, for having both of us in your sitting rooms this evening. May God bless you, and may you have a beautiful evening ahead of you. Wassalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.